Hi and welcome. We're looking at 10 one circles in circumference. I'm going to be doing some uh, exercises here from the study guide so that we can see what we're working with. Please notice that at the top of every study guide that is provided, you have a um, little a bit of information here. It says that circles consist of all the points in a plane that are a given distance from a center. That given distance is called the radius, and so here in this circle from the center F out to the edge, that distance is the radius, and so FC would be the radius of this circle. The segment or line can intersect a circle in a bunch of different ways. The segment that has an endpoint at the center and at the edge of the circle is the radius. The segment that has its endpoint on the circle would be a chord, so this one right here, A to E, would be a chord, but so would D to B because those endpoints are also on the circle. But if you notice, D to B also passes through the very center of our circle labeled F. So not only is DB a chord of the circle, it's a special chord called the diameter. We've got some formula here that help us relate the measurement of the diameter to the radius. In these, R stands for radius and D stands for diameter. We'll use this to complete the examples here at the bottom of our study guide numbers one through seven. Let me go ahead and zoom in so that we can see it a little better. Whoa, I'm off the page. All right, number one asks us to name the circle. In order to name the circle, we need to identify the point in the middle. This point here in the middle is R, and so this circle's name is R. We're going to write the name of that by writing the symbol for a circle, which is a circle with a dot in the middle of it, and then the letter R for the dot uh, at the center. This word is pronounced radii, it means more than one radius, and so they want us to name all of the different line segments that are a radius of this circle. So all the line segments that have one of the endpoints on the center of the circle and the other endpoints on the edge of the circle. And so Rx would be one of the radii. Rx and I'm going to put the symbol for a line segment over it because it is a line segment. We're going to do that for all of the rest of them. Pause the video now to identify and name all of the radii in the circle, and when we come back, we'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here are the radii of the circle. Line segment RA, line segment RB, and line segment RY. Number three asks us to name the chords in the circle. Remember that chords are segments that go from one edge of the circle to another edge of the circle. They can pass through the center. They don't have to, but they are allowed to. Let's look at one of the chords that we have visible. We see this line right here goes from A to X. That would be one chord in our circle because it goes from edge to edge. And so we can name this chord AX. Again, because this is a line segment, I'm drawing the symbol for line segment above it. Pause the video now so that you can see the, you can attempt to find and name the chords in the circle. And when we come back, we'll reveal the rest of the answers. Welcome back. Let's look for all the rest of the chords together. The ones that are visible are AX, AB, XY and YB. But those aren't the only chords in a circle because you can have lines that connect any two points anywhere you want. And so one of the chords that's not drawn for us but that does in fact exist in the circle is this chord right here from A to Y. So line segment AY is also a chord in the circle. Likewise, XB is a chord in the circle that isn't drawn for you, but you can imagine that there would be a line segment connecting those two right there. Nicely done. 
Number four is asking you to name the diameters of the circle. Recall that diameters are just chords, but these have to pass through the center of the circle. Number one, when we named the circle, gave us the center, and so we have the center as R. So we need to look for chords that pass through point R. Looking at our diagram, if we go from Y to X, we have to pass through R along our way. And so one of the diameters in this circle is line segment YX. Pause the video now to locate the other diameters in the circle. Welcome back. Here is the other diameter in the circle because in order to go from A to B, you have to pass through point R, which is the center of our circle. And so line segment AB is the other diameter in the circle. There do not appear to be any other diameters written here. Sure, we could say that this line right here, if I drew one this way, would be a diameter, but I don't have any points already labeled for us. And so we're not going to make points up and add more stuff. Let's go ahead and look at number five. If AB is 18 millimeters, okay, so AB is a diameter, and diameters have a relationship to radii. That could be important, so we'll hang on to that thought in a second. If we know that AB measures 18 millimeters, then we need to find the measurements of AR. Looking at AR, I notice that AR is a radius. Up above, and I'm going to scoot my paper down so we can look at our notes from up above, I see that a radius is half the diameter. Because I've been given a diameter measurement, I can take that measurement and divide it by 2. And whatever my answer is, is the radius. And so I'm going to take the measurement of AB and divide it by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And so AR's measurement is 9 millimeters. MM stands for millimeters. Try number six, number six, excuse me, on your own. Pause the video to work on that, and when we come back, we'll tell you how to find AR and AB. Welcome back, looking at number six. ARY, excuse me, is 10 inches. RY is a radius. It wants me to find AR. AR is also a radius. Because the circle has the same distance from the center to any point on the circle, all of the measures of the radii are all congruent. They're all equal to each other. And so if RY is 10 inches, then AR must also be 10 inches. Looking at AB, I notice that AB is a diameter. And if I scoot up to the very top where my notes are, I notice this relationship that tells me that a diameter is two radii measures long. So if I take the measurement of one of my radii, which is 10 inches, I can use that multiplied by two to give me the length of my diameter. In this case, 10 times two is 20. Look at number seven. Number seven is asking, is it true that AB has the same measurement as XY? It, line segment AB congruent to line segment XY. Take a moment to think about that. Write down your answer and your best explanation. Pause the video while you do that. And when you come back, we'll discuss that answer together. Hi, welcome back. We're looking at number seven. By now, you should have already gotten your answer yes or no. If we look at this circle, we notice that AB is a diameter and XY is also a diameter. The question is, are they congruent? Do they have the same measure? The short answer is that yes. Yes, they do have the same measure. And that's because each diameter is the length of two radii. And since the radii are all congruent within a circle, <coughs> all of the diameters are also congruent to each other. 
So we need to write something to that effect down here. Um, yes, because one diameter is the same as two radii. And in a circle, all radii are congruent. Go ahead and pause the video now and look over your work and when we come back we'll do the second half of the study guide for 10-1. Hi, welcome back. We're looking at the second half of the study guide for 10-1 and that is talking about circles and circumference. Looking at the very first item here, we notice that we've been given the definition of the circumference, which is the distance all the way around the circle and a formal definition in the box. Here are the two important formulas for us to remember. We're going to use the capital letter C to represent the circumference of a circle. This funky symbol right there is the symbol pi. If you're asked for an exact value, you will leave pi as a symbol. If you're asked to find it to the nearest tenth place or hundredth place value, you'll replace this with its numeric value. That numeric value for pi is 3.14. There are many more decimal places after that, but that's what we'll use for now. The lowercase d represents the measure of the diameter, and the lowercase r represents the measure of the radius. There are two different formulas for the circumference of the circle, and you're welcome to use whichever one you like the best for the situation that you have in front of you. Let's go ahead and look down at exercises one through six. First set asks us to find the diameter and the radius of the circle when we're given uh, the circumference. It's asking us to round to the nearest hundredth. This means we are going to replace the symbol pi with its numeric equivalent 3.14. Mm, más o menos. <laughs> All right, let's look at this first one, the circumference of 40. We want to find the diameter. So I'm going to use my formula from up above that says that the measure of the circumference is equal to pi times the measure of the diameter. I've been given the measure of the circumference, which is 40. And I'm trying to find the measure of the diameter. Because I am multiplying pi to the diameter, in order to get the diameter by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by the value of pi. And when I put that into my handy dandy calculator, it should give me the measure of the diameter of this circle. Oh my goodness, I dropped my calculator on the floor. I'm so sorry, Mr. Calculator. All right, going into the calculator, I'm going to type in this. Four, zero divided by, and now these calculators have this very cool function, button right down here by the H, that is the symbol pi. So if I click that, I come up with a pop-up menu. There's my symbol for pi. I'm going to hit enter to tell the calculator I want that symbol, and now my calculator knows that I'm going to divide 40 by pi. And now I don't need to remember that pi is 3.14. The calculator will remember that for me. Hit enter, and there's my decimal place. It asks me to round to the nearest hundredth in my directions, and so that is two decimal places. One, two. The number right after that is less than five, and so I leave that number by itself. And my final response is 12.73 inches. Do the same sort of thing for radius or think that the radius is, um, excuse me, the diameter is two times the radius. Now that I have a measurement for the diameter, I can substitute that in and then divide both sides by two to help me figure out the measure of the radius. In my calculator, 
with this diameter measure being the last thing on there, I can just hit divide by 2. And the calculator automatically knows that I want to divide my last answer by 2. Again, looking at my calculator, I need to round to the nearest hundredth place, so one, two decimal places. Look at the one right after it. I see it's bigger than five, so I'm going to add one to this number right here. And there it is, my calculation for diameter and radius for number one. You'll do the rest of the items in this section the same way. For the bottom part of the page, you're being asked to find the exact circumference of the circle. That means that if you have any radicals or any um, pi symbols, you'll need to leave those by itself. I'm going to do number one. The rest of these items are found very much the same way. They just have different numbers. So looking at number seven, I notice that I have a right triangle sitting here. And any time I have a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean Theorem or trigonometry to help me out. This measurement right here is a diameter measurement, and it is also the hypotenuse of my right triangle because it exists uh, directly across from the right angle. Whenever I have a right triangle where I know two of the sides and trying to figure out the measure of the third side, I can use the Pythagorean Theorem to help me out. Pythagorean Theorem reads a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That means one leg of the right triangle squared, multiplied by itself, plus the other leg of the triangle squared will be equal to the hypotenuse's measure squared. So I'm going to substitute for the information that I know. And this says 8 squared plus 6 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Notice this is a lowercase c. Don't get it confused with the uppercase c that we're using for circumference. Although I suppose at this point, if you wanted, you could say, well, this hypotenuse is also the diameter of my circle. So I'm going to replace it with the lowercase d for diameter just so I don't get confused with circumference. Let me zoom in a little bit closer into my work so that you can see better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this quick arithmetic. 8 squared is 64. 6 squared is 36. 64 plus 36 is 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. And so the diameter of this circle is 10. But I don't want this diameter of the circle. I'm interested in the circumference of the circle. And so I need to go to my formula. The circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Because I've been asked for the exact circumference, I'm going to leave pi as a symbol. My diameter it measures 10 centimeters. And so I'm going to write here 10 centimeters. Because this looks weird, we're used to in mathematics writing the number before the symbol. I'm going to go ahead and switch their places. I can do that because they're multiplying together. And so the circumference of the circle in number 7 is 10 pi centimeters around. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for working with me here today and we'll see you in the next video.